My name is Muhammad. I live in Jenin, West Bank. I lost my brother in 2002. When he was 16, I was 14. Through my whole life, I witnessing the occupation and the army. When I was three months, uh, a tear gas uh, grenade thrown from an Israeli soldier in the first intifada to my house. I was born in 1988. <clears throat> As we are a small family, five brothers and four sisters, and this is, you know, this is small Arab family, so my mother saved what she can to save, and I was, you know, baby three months. And when she came to take me, she didn't found me. But after hours of searching, I was in intensive care unit in a hospital, and they were taking the tear gas out of my lung. This is what my mother told me when I grew up. After that, I've been witnessing the soldiers in their military jeeps and their tanks in the checkpoint. And I never went to Israel to meet Israelis because I was too young. And the Second Intifada uprising came in 2000. And in 2002, there was tanks and incursion. And the incident that I lost my brother was by a tank bullet, and they prevented everyone from helping him. And yes, this is one of the reasons that I studied nursing and become an intensive care unit nurse. In, in the second day, after they killed my brother, they entered our house. They took the whole house, and they kept us in one room. And they took the house for the whole day. Four years later, I entered the university in Nablus. I started to study nursing. I also got through checkpoints in daily basis. I also worked in Ramallah, also checkpoints, also uh, militants, also soldiers. So I never met an Israeli in real life. In 2016, when I was back home from my work, uh, <clears throat> I entered my family house and I saw Ruby Damlin in my house and another Israeli woman. I said hi to them and entered my room. After they left, I told my mother, why is there an Israeli woman in our house? She told me they are bereaved families at one Israeli, and this is a dialogue meeting that the Beirut Circle did. And one Palestinian woman and one Israeli woman talked about their loss, and we asked the questions, and we heard the answer, and it was a dialogue. And we cried together. So in a sarcastic way, I told her, is that kind of group therapy that you talk about your loss and they cried together? So she told me, no, they are the Baron Circle and they are doing a lot of other programs, like the Baron Narrative, which is bringing Palestinians and Israelis together to talk about their narrative and to discuss it through two months in a well-organized program. And she told me, you should go. And I told her, yes, I will go. This kind of sarcastic way to respond to my mother that she forced me to do things. So. I said this yes and went out to meet friends. One week later, I got a call from the Baron Circle that tomorrow you have a meeting in Beit Jala with Israelis. <coughs> I was angry. I called my mother. I told her why you do, did that. She told me you said yes. <laughs> so I said yes. And during this week, I was looking about what they are doing, the Baron Circle, and the programs, the photos. 
And I was curious because I never met an Israeli. My father wa worked for 20 years in Haifa and he met Israelis. But after my brother killed, they banned him from entering Israel. They, they will not give permissions to any members of bereaved families. Like, I lost my brother and no one from the family can have permission to enter Israel because they will be afraid that we will take revenge. <coughs> no, no. This is like collective punishment for, I don't know what. So, 10% of curiosity and 90% forced from mother, I decided to go uh, because in the next morning I put my phone in silent uh, to not to go and at 6 a.m. my mother waking me up, the taxi is waiting for you. So I went to, to bed jail a three hours of drive and in the beginning, it's to start with introduction. Each one introduced himself. And one of the Israelis said, my name is this and this. And I served in the West Bank, 2002 to 2005. I was very angry. I felt rage. I was shivering. I was... It was not fear, it was, I was sweating, I couldn't bear to stay in the same room with this guy. I left the circle and went to the restroom, I washed my face. And the Palestinian facilitator came to me and told me, why you left the circle? I told him, I can't bear to be in this room with this guy. I can't be in the same room with the soldier that served in West Bank. He told me, you know that all of them are soldiers. I told him, yes, I know, but I didn't believe that I will feel like this. I can't stay. So he told me, please stay, just wait for the taxi. I will call the taxi, I can't, for you. I can't force you to stay. But wait for the taxi, but join our next activity and then you the taxi will come, then you will leave. I went back to the circle. In the next activity, in this will organize the program, people talk more about their self, what they are doing, and what they are doing in their personal life, and what they are doing for peace and reconciliation. And this guy told us that he saw a lot of bad things in the Cuba territories that he was against and he is willing for peace and he is against the occupation and this is, was my breakthrough that the first time I saw the human side of the others this was my breakthrough that I know that there is humans in the other side that are willing to peace since then, I've been active in the forum. I've been in the Young Ambassador for Peace program, which is for youth. And I'm also facilitating and running the summer camp, managing the summer camp for the last six years. I'm working with kids and youth. One of the things that bring me hope, in, not in this f last four months only, after October 7th, but also before that, in the last three years, it was very difficult to live in Jenin, my city. House demolished, streets, and every corner it has a bullet or uh, a trace of what is happening now. And I hope that everything will end and I will continue my work also because it's essential to do that. It's the hardest thing to do. And I saw this, and I saw what is Ruby going on, and how it's difficult to, to swim against the tide. So thank you all for being here.